Come on. Do I sound like I'm joking? Do I sound like I'm playing? When you look into my eyes, you understand what I'm saying? Let me say it to you slowly and it may sound scandalous. I don't think that you can handle this. Once again, we are on. He is the great Mike Steph. I am the Mojo King. We are together in Hidden Gems Football. As punishment for not being here last week, you don't get to have Mike's one big thing. Or maybe we're just uh, trying to make sure we get through all the te- games we need to get to. Anyway, let's get right into it. Thursday night football. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're three and one going to Atlanta to face the two and two Falcons. The Falcons are two and a half point favorites. The projected total is 43 and a half. That means Vegas is telling us that the final score will be Tampa Bay 20 and a half points, Atlanta 23 points. As far as injuries, It's early in the week, which means we get a bunch of nonsense. Tampa Bay has literally half their starters listed as injured. But let's talk about the wide receivers because it is kind of important here. Mike Evans is in practice for a knee injury. I think he's had that going the last couple of weeks, so I'm not really worried about him. On the other hand, number three receiver, rookie Jalen McMillan, sat out last game with a hamstring injury. We'll have to see if he's going to be able to come back. And reserve Trey Palmer had a concussion, so it's a good chance he won't be here for week five. On Atlanta's side, as far as injuries, they have two that seem pretty significant. Bijan Robinson uh, has a pulled hamstring. He is going to be questionable for week five. And Ray Ray McLeod hurt his ankle. The early the early season hero. <laughs> Are you... <laughs> No, I was. I, I realized I, it, it came across like I'm laughing at his injury. I'm just really like, oh, Ray Ray, Ray Ray and him. No disrespect. Okay, I, I, I thought you were. I thought you were laughing at his ankle injury. I uh, no, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm look. I'm not that. I'm not that type of guy. All right, <laughs> Mike Step. Uh, what do you got in this game? Who you like, Tampa Bay or Atlanta? You know, pre pre show. Uh, a lot of Atlanta came up, but it was mostly on the Braves. And um, come to think of it. Since we've started this season, we've talked about Atlanta a lot. We talked about them in the NFC South preview. We talked about it in the first part of our fan series, focusing on the Atlanta Falcons. And for the third time in five weeks, they're in a primetime matchup, meaning we talked about them. But I'm going to actually talk about the Bucks first, even though I just already gave you a spiel about the about the Falcons, like the Bucks, they're three and one coming off a dominant 33-16 victory against Philadelphia Eagles this past Sunday. Baker Mayfield, he has eight TDs so far this season, and this last Sunday he torched Philadelphia for 347 yards in the air. It makes you wonder whether or not the think of the loss previous week against Denver was an outlier, was legit, or maybe it was a fluke, especially due to the team we'll be talking about later which got beat by those same pesky Denver Broncos. Now, when it comes to the Falcons, the Falcons are two and two, 500. That means they're merely average. And do you know that the Falcons are actually three combined points away from being 0-4 with a drive less than two minutes remaining against Philly and a last second field goal versus the Saints, they could very easily be 0-4. Kirk Cousins has been Kirk Cousins. He's been average. He's had four touchdowns on the season, and he equaled that with four interceptions so far in the season. And what's up with Bijan? Well, you said he's injured. I mean, he's averaging like 56 yards per game on the ground. Is that your king? Is that your king? Is Darnell Mooney your number one? I thought Drake London was supposed to be the number one. I thought Kyle Pitts was supposed to be that dude. But yet y'all being led by Darnell Mooney who I'm quite sure y'all figured he would be a competent number two and not your go-to receiver. The one bright spot is that all of their games have been decided by one possession. So the Falcons are favored by two and a half points? Yes, indeed. Oh, wow. So technically, I, I know they I know they changed the standard. Usually the home team automatically got three. I think they sw- switched it down to two or something like that. So, so technically, I guess they're like really – underdog by half a point so it's gonna hurt me to say this because you know i have brotherly love down in dirty dirty but the bucks have been playing better than the falcons and being the fact that Bijan is a little hampered and ray ray is a little bit hampered i'm gonna go with the bucks because i think baker 
is going to go down to the dirty dirty and light it up on a short week. So I'm going to say Bucks plus two and a half. And that over under, I'm going over. The spread surprised me because I actually thought Tampa would be the favorite maybe by two and a half points. Tampa's three and one. Their loss was horrendous. They got embarrassed by Denver out of all teams. But those three wins have been pretty dominant. They beat Washington. They beat up Detroit. And they beat Philadelphia, who's uh, kind of struggling a little bit. But they whooped them. So meanwhile, Atlanta, like you pointed out, they've had two squeaky victories. But last week, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even think they scored an offensive touchdown. So I, I got Tampa pretty easily. I think I would take them in the money line. I might circle back to them in our next segment, to tell you the truth. Um, as far as the over-under, that one I'm a little bit more concerned about. 43 and a half. I think I'm going to go over just because Tampa's been explosive enough. But um, Atlanta's been really interesting that they've hovered around 20 points every game. So since I got Tampa Bay over Atlanta anyway, you know, a 24-20 game would do it. So that's how I like it. All right. Let's move on to the Survivor. I still have my single team left in the original Survivor. I have a few more in ones that I added later, but this is an interesting week. Mike, Steph, uh, do you have any preferences on Survivor so far? Because uh, oh, damn, you, this you week's ridiculous. You yeah, I'm throwing me. it right to you. Ah, uh, yeah, you threw it to me, right? Listen, I'm going to make a comment. I think was too broad. We had a special correspondent here last week in the Mojo Queen. And she had her survivor pick, which actually ended up being correct. The Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, based on based on based on Beyonce, which sometimes we overthink it. She said Houston Texans, Houston Texans won. So the Mojo Queen was actually better than all of us last week. But my thing was she said we both sucked. No, no. One person over here. Yeah, yeah. I, I know this is a teamwork, but one person over here, because even though I was on I guess solitary confinement last week, <laughs> but I was almost close on the money with my insane pick of picking the charges over the chiefs. 17, 10, they covered. I said, look, they'll cover. They'll cover the eight. We're talking survivor. You got to win. I know. I know. Listen, I'm taking the win when I can. Okay. But they didn't win. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Just to get to the survivor picks for this week, you got Seattle favored by six over the Giants. You got the 49ers favored by seven and a half over the Cardinals. And you got the Chiefs favored by five and a half over his his most favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, which we'll talk about in a very few minutes. So out of those three games, to the one that I would go for, I'm going to refrain from it just for personal reasons. That would have been Seattle over the Giants, but I'm not saying that on record. So I guess I'll go to my backup which would be the 49ers over the Cardinals. 49ers are 2-2. Two and two, The Cardinals are 1-3. The Cardinals got blown the hell out by the Commanders this past week. I believe it was at home. Their defense is a sieve. And the 49ers, even though they're dealing with a lot of injuries, still that pedigree is good for something. So since we're not talking about spreads, we're talking about straight up money lines, straight up wins, I'll go for 49ers over the Cardinals. That's my survivor pick. So interesting enough, you went through them, but – the Chiefs are five-point favorites, the Seahawks are six-point favorites, the 49ers are seven-half-point favorites, and the Commanders are three-point favorites. What do they all have in common? They are all picks that I've already used in my one survivor from the beginning of the season, which is the reason I'm in a little bit of panic zone. By the way, the Mojo Queen was exactly right with her Houston, Tex Texas pick because of Beyonce. Here we are. I should have listened to her and just took them so I could take the 49ers this week. But since I can't, the 49ers will be my first pick. Seahawks will be my second pick. I'm kind of trapped here. The biggest spreads left, the Carolina Panthers at the Chicago Bears. If you listened to me last week, I just said, why would you ever pick the Bears? Meanwhile, the other one is the Packers, who are three and a half point favorites, heading to LA to face the Rams. I don't want to take the road team, even though I'm pretty confident Green Bay will win that. I'm really leaning towards Chicago this week. I feel a little disgusted at myself because of what I said last week, and then I'm leaning towards them this week. Uh, but that's the one, probably the best option I have. 
My second option, honestly, would actually be to take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because I think that they should beat the Falcons. But they're underdogs. They're on the road. It's probably not a smart play by me. So I'll probably end up just doing the smart thing and taking the Bears. Yo, what's up? I'm Desmond, and I'm the host of Hip to the Games, a podcast from 19 Media Group, where the brilliance of basketball and hip-hop's past and present is genuinely appreciated. Join me every other Friday as we celebrate some of the greatest artists, albums, moments, songs, bars, punchlines, NBA teams, players, just anything and everything to do with the game of rap and the game of basketball. See, if you like basketball and hip-hop, that means you're hip to the game. But no matter where you fall on that spectrum, I encourage you to join the fun every other Friday on your favorite podcast platform, courtesy of the Great 19 Media Group. This is a 19 Media Group presentation. And of course, my Mets won yesterday. Did they win the second game too? No. Okay. Oh, no. So, that, so the they, was, they were trying. Huh? So the Braves made it in, right? Because if they had uh, yeah, so pretty much both teams made it in and, yeah. and bumped average. Oh, shoot. And bumped Arizona. <laughs> wow. I mean, I know there's tears out there. Diamondbacks lose as a five of the last seven games. It's joke. <laughs>